What's going on, Virgin Redemption Podcast listeners, Shatter It Movement members, and now 30-Day Shattered Life Journal Challenge acceptors, I guess, and all-around self-help addicts. Love to see you. Thank you guys so much for joining in and engaging with this uh, challenge. has been so much fun. Over the weekend, I made sure that two videos went up. Sunday gave us a break on the videos, but we are back day six. There should be no breaks for you guys. Uh, I'll make sure that by the end of it all, you guys have 30 days and a video to go with each day. Boom. What are we talking about today? Riding a wave, baby. I don't surf. I talk about this in the journal. I don't surf, never have surfed, but I do, um, with bipolar disorder, struggle with emotional surfing, you know, mood swings as they call them. How do you stop from riding these waves? Before you guys get into the journal, I'm going to give you a few quick tips that won't necessarily pertain to any of the challenges or anything like that, but how to settle yourself in an emotional wave when you just can't seem to get out. And this isn't going to be your typical, you know, take 10 breaths, clench your fist like that Arthur meme and, you know, go on about your day and, you know, turn the other cheek kind of thing. This isn't going to be that kind of advice. This is going to be real time advice that I can give, have given in the past, but is going to give again because I think it's helpful in these times. A lot of people are quarantined right now. A lot of people are working from home in close proximity to each other. And a lot of people are outside of their regular routines. It gets people uncomfortable. It gets people feeling like they're ready to crawl out of their skin, especially people who suffer from things like PTSD or any kind of autism. Routine is so important. Now, what do we do when a routine can't be, you know, it can't be kept? Things are changing. The world is rapidly changing. Hopefully it's going to go back to normal soon, but you're in a situation. The emotions are up. Something happened. Bang! You're ready to pop off. I just talked about this in an amazing um, Instagram live I did with Coaching with Susie. I'm so grateful for her and the Movement Makers Club that I've joined over there. But we were talking about, like, what do you do before you're going to pop off, right? We know that feeling. Everyone knows that feeling. Everyone pops off a little bit different. Different, but when you pop off it feels good there's something in it that it's an adrenaline rush it's almost like a high it's like a coffee kick it's it's everything for some people that they search for in drugs and alcohol it's the same type of addiction emotional rage can be an addiction that's why some people suffer from violent outbursts right they don't necessarily want to hurt people it's that feeling is something that they can't necessarily say no to once they're in it i've i've gone long enough how do we get through it right i've noticed that directing your physical attention i guess is what i was trying to actually say focusing your physical attention and energy in another direction is very important so that's all people are really trying to get you to do when they tell you to breathe or whatnot or when you're putting your fist through a wall or God forbid, at another person, not inside of a ring. You're trying to get that energy out of you and onto something else. So what I immediately advise people to do, and don't let anyone make you feel bad for doing this, begin to create physical distance between yourself and the thing causing the issue. That's never a problem, right? If something is causing you some sort of distress, then you need to create distance so you can reassess that situation. If someone is antagonizing you to stay into a compromising or maybe confrontational situation, they are now seen as a threat for some reason. They're not respecting the boundary that you're giving them that's needed to make appropriate decisions. So now, according to any law, stature, whatever, you have the right to become a little more aggressive in that nature. Hey, I'm leaving this situation. I'm walking away from this conversation. I'm leaving what you think is a fight. You can call me whatever you want. That's fine. I'm out, right? When it's not so physical, like a, you're right in front of people, oftentimes you have relationships. Those of us have um, children with people that we're no longer in relationships with, you know that every day could be an exciting adventure as to what you could put up with. Um, it can just be something as simple as missing um, or, you know, a lot of time with your child can spend, send me into a spiral where I want to burn everything and tear the world apart trying to get justice and trying to get some kind of validation that I think um, is needed when all I've been able to do is convince myself that if I just keep doing the next right thing, and this applies to everyone, 
if you just keep doing the next right thing, the energy will get back in your favor. I'm not saying that you can't feel like smashing people through a wall. God knows. God knows. But that's why we have things, and I do recommend it in the journal that, you know, like mixed martial arts, guys. Take a class. Take a cardio kickboxing class. You don't have to get touched. You don't have to get, you don't have to spar. If you suffer from any sort of aggression, and I notice people that really have issues getting out of emotional states, at some point, the desire for violence tends to show up then. Most people may not execute on it, but at some point, how deep do things go? I just talked about this the other day with, uh, it was my wife or maybe my father, but I was talking about what is the difference at some point between a guy going out and shooting people in the streets, now I'm talking about in his own mind, not the results of, and then going and playing these video games where you're killing people all day long. All I'm saying is you're desensitizing yourself to the situation, the probability of, or the likelihood of that situation happening. How often do we have to see what you give your attention to becomes who you are? Now, I think a lot of people are able to discern the two. I wasn't aware of this. Apparently a lot of gamers like this channel. Shout out to all my gamers. Um, I appreciate all of you guys that are here. And I appreciate that you're listening to mental health while you play video games. That's great. That is great. I applaud you tremendously for that. I hope you're winning whatever game you're playing. I have no qualms against disappearing into games. All I'm saying is, please be careful with the amount of time that you give to violence. That's it. Again, if you can, <clears throat> excuse me, if you can discern that and you know when to get off that emotional wave, hey, it's time to step back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. If you're able to do that, fine, no issue. But if you're here, we're doing a 30-day mental health challenge, so we're going to talk about clearing out the things that ail us. And if sometimes violence and aggression comes into your mind and you don't know why and you're like, that's not who I am. Well, look at the things you're doing. What waves are you riding? I talk about this all the time on the Road to Redemption podcast. I look at what my attention goes to like colors color energy so if i'm watching something on the television or on my phone it's giving me a color it's either red being that it's a negative thing it's a dark undertone they're talking about things that i necessarily don't feel i should spend my time listening to or it's blue i'm learning i'm i'm growing something's helping me i'm, I'm gaining something from it okay good because i notice if you pay attention to those things those same colors come back out later in your words, actions, and thoughts. Most importantly, your thoughts. How you think becomes what you say, what you believe, and who you become. I can't make that any more clear. Guys, I love you so much. Be careful what waves you decide to ride. Do some research. I made this analogy in the book. If I was going to learn how to surf, I would go and I would ask people what is the best surfboard should i wax it should i i would learn about it first right before you jump into these emotional waves which emotional decision making is what you're going to end up doing before you do that do research before making the purchase or causing the explosion does the town you're about to attack or the person or the belief or the idea that you're about to attack is it worth attacking? Does it deserve what it's about to get? Good or bad? Good or bad? Do you deserve, does this person, thing, or activity deserve your love and attention right now? Or should you separate, create distance, create a boundary, get off that wave, and maybe go find your own? I love you so much, guys. Road, the number two, redemptionpodcast.com. You can get all the new merch we got up. The 30-Day Shattered Life Journal Challenge pre-order is up, guys. It is a digital um, content right now. You'll be able to have it right there on your phones. We are working on getting a physical copy. Please um, subscribe, like this video, go back and watch all the other series so you guys can get caught up if you're just jumping in on this one. And again, share it with your friends. I'm get, hearing a lot of people say they were uh, having it recommended to them. So that's awesome. Nothing makes me happier in the world. So thank you guys so much. I love you and we will see you tomorrow.